Hello guys. What? Now you're uploading every single day? <laughs> no, I'm not. So what I'm doing is today, Sunday, I got a free day. So I'm going to record like five, six videos in a row. And then I'm going to send someone to edit. Then once he edit every single day, probably every day I would be able to publish for like four, five videos. That's all, right? Then it will go back to the regular rhythm until I get other day or two to record uh, some videos in a row. Anyway, so in the last video, we discussed about how we can think as a software engineer. There, we learn BFS and DFS, right? That's so important. I got that just because it's a little difficult to understand. But other than that, you should be good on leads, set, trees, and everything. Okay. Today, we are going to solve the first problem, thinking as a software engineer, right? So what is the problem? I call this as an ATM problem, okay? So let me draw the problem first. Right, here is the problem, right? Just assume all these are ATMs, automatic teller machine, where you could put your credit card away or debit card and uh, withdraw money. Right, so these are ATMs, right? How these ATMs are connected from one to one, right? So this ATM connected to here, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, something like that, right? So then probably one of these ATM is connected to switch and then uh, they can do the communication, right? So what we are going to do is, according to this diagram, there are certain ATMs are so critical. Why? If that ATM stop working or if that if we remove that ATM from the grid then other ATMs will not be able to work right that why because this then this graph this entire graph is split into multiple graphs for example by just looking at that we can tell this is a critical node why if you remove this one this three will act as a different graph and this five will act as a different graph right you got it so this is a critical point also, this is a critical point. By, I mean, we can tell that by looking at the graph itself. Why? Because if you remove this, these two work independently, these work independently, right? If you remove this, these work independently, these work independently. But let's say you remove this one, the B, no problem, right? So you can make a path from here, 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 here. Every other nodes, every other vertexes can communicate, right? So by just looking at this graph, we can tell it because it's a very simple. But just imagine problem something like this. All these are bridges, right? All these are bridges in your country, right? So now you need to find what are the most critical bridge. If that uh, get a problem, if that breakdown, then uh, you cannot travel from one side to other side of your country, right? You can think in that way. Or you can think these are network switches, right? If one switch is fail, then network will split into multiple networks, right? So you can think in a different way, any, any way you want, but this is, a, this is what we are going to solve. Here's the problem. By manually, by just looking at this, you can tell, yeah, wow, C is a critical, G is a critical. But how we can do this for a graph where you have thousands of millions of nodes? It's impossible you to just look at and tell it. Also, uh, it is not possible a computer system or your program to look at this and tell how this works. Okay. So now when you get a problem like this, you don't get a graph, right? Someone will tell you, hey, this is what you need to do. I have uh, 10,000 bridges in my country and you need to figure out what are the most critical bridges uh, if that breakdown, if, if that bridge has some problem, then the one side of the country cannot kind of, uh, travel to the other side, something like that. Or you will ask, hey, my network has a, a 10,000 switches, right? And if uh, we, I need you to find what are the most critical switches. Let's say you figure out this, what is the solution? Solution is you make an edge from these two nodes. So now if you remove this, no problem, you can come here, through this edge, you can communicate it, right? Now if that break, it's the same thing, you make a other edge, right? So that's the solution, but your task is to find the, what are the most critical bridges. So, so these vertexes, we call, these point, these type of points in the graph, we call articulation point, right? Articulation point of a graph. 
if, if your graph is a quality graph, there shouldn't be any articulation point, right? So let's say these are the bridges. So once you put all the bridges into a map, then or, or a graph, then uh, you should find is there an articulation bridge? If you find something, then you need to fix it by uh, connecting other two, right? So now today we are going to do is programmatically figure out what are the articulation points of this grid, right? Of this graph. Right, so to do that, we need to draw, we are going to use a DFS. So now you know why uh, in the last video I explained this DFS and a BFS, right? The reason uh, to do that, right? So now uh, in the last video, I explained how to use a queue and how to really figure out what are the DFSs. But in this video, I'm not going to spend time for that. I'm just going to just draw the uh, DFS, right? So DFS spanning tree. Right, DFS spanning tree. Right, so the DFS spanning tree means uh, by selecting one node and you traverse through the graph in a DFS algorithm and you draw the tree of the traversing. Right, so let's draw one. So let's I, I take the A as a, a starting vertex. Right, so then you have an A. Right, then from A, uh, let's let's so it's here. Right, so you have an A. And from A, you can go to the D. And from D, you can go to C. From C, you can go to E. From E, you can go to F. From F, you can go to G. From G, you can go to uh, H. From H, you can go to I. Right? So, that is the first move of my uh, DFS. A, B, C, E. F, G, H, I, right? If you see now, you can see there is a path from I to G, right? So you can mark it like this, I to G, and we call this as a backtrack, right? So, uh, or back edge, whatever, right? And then you have G to F that is captured, and then you have uh, F to C, right? So you have F to C, and also, uh, you have a, a one more edge from C called B, right? This edge, right? And from B to A, you have a uh, back edge, right? So now, we are done. This is our spanning tree for the given graph, right? So you should know how to draw a spanning tree. I mean, you don't draw this, you uh, build this by traversing this, this graph, right? So now you can see these, these uh, dashed lines are uh, backtrack or else uh, back edges and these are edges, these are vertexes. Okay, so now, now we are good, right? So now let's try to figure out how, what are the articulation points of this graph. To figure that out, you need to do three things, right? One is you need to name, you need to, uh, when you build this spanning tree, you need to mark what is the value of this depth, right? So that means uh, how you traverse this, what is the depth of this, right? For example, we started from here, so this will be d equal 1, so then this is a d equal 2, d equal 3, then we went to e, d equal 4, d equal 5, d equal 6, d equal 7, d equal 8, and d equal 9. This was the last uh, one we uh, traverse so the equal nine so that is we call depth uh, depth index right depth index being so when you traverse through and what was the index you reach that vertex right so now we need to do one more thing right we need to do one more thing so that is we need to uh, find what is the lowest number lowest depth we can reach from each vertex right for example Except the node, right? So this is this is uh, of course is one, right? Because this is the lowest number. If you take the D, there's a one rule by the way from this. You only can use one back edge, right? So sometimes you call reverse edge. I didn't see that uh, much, but backtrack or back edge or something. So now you only can use one back edge to go to the lowest uh, depth you you can go, right? Okay. When when I do this, you will figure out, right? From the uh, D, 
from the from the D, you can go to C. You cannot go back, right? You can go to C. From C, you can go to B. From B, you can go to A, right? So that means for the D also, uh, it's a one. Okay. So let's let's do a let's do a, a table here, right? A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I. Right? Those are the nouns. So let's do the D value here. If I write here, you can see, right? Yeah. D value here, right? A is a D1. Uh, this is the 2. D is the 2. C is the 3. Right? E is the 4. F is the 5. G, 6. H, 7. I, 8. B, 9. Right? These are the D numbers. So now let's try to find the error number, but the lowest edge you can go. From A is a 1, right? From D, it's uh, D to C, C to B, B to 1. This is still 1, right? From C, you can go to B and you can go back here. It's a still 1, right? From D, D you can go to C, C to B, B to uh, A. That's again, it's a 1, right? From E, see, see this one is important. From E, you can go to F, see this one, right? You can go to F. From F, you can use this back edge, you can go to C, right? So C value is a 3. If you want, you can go to B, but B is a 9, right? But we are looking for the lowest number. So therefore, we need to stop from here. So th because you cannot go back anymore, because only one back edge you can use, right? So 3 is the lowest number E can go. Right, F also 3 because you can go further. Uh, G, G is uh, critical. G, you can go to uh, H, you can go to I, back, you come here, right? Uh, G is 6. H, you can go to I and come back, it's again 6. I is also 6, right? So these are the lowest values you can hit by given any nodes, right? So now we have done the majority part. We find the depth index and also we find the lowest edge you can reach from each vertex, right? So now you have a formula, right? The formula is, this is very important, right? So this formula is very important. The formula is, uh, if you get the U and a V, as two nodes, where u we call as a parent, right? v is a child, u is a parent, v is a child. The formula is lowest value of child greater than or equal depth index of parent. If this condition is true, if this condition is true, then this u is an articulation point. Right? U is the articulation point. Okay? So what the articulation point, how we can find it? If you have, if you take two nodes, like for example, uh, D and C. D is a parent, C is a child. C and E. e C is a parent, E is a child. E and F. E is a parent, C, uh, F is a child. Right? And then um, uh, F to G. F parent, G child. G to H. Like that. Right? There are multiple nodes. If you take any two nodes, lowest index of child greater than or equal to the depth index of the parent if this condition is true if in case if this condition is true then then u is the articulation point of a graph right so now let's figure out that okay so if you take d and c right d and c where d is a parent uh, c is a child right so that, that means what we are going to write here, uh, D and C, right? So that means lowest in, let's say D to C. Can you see this? Yeah. So I, D to C. Okay. So lowest index of uh, who's a child? C. Greater than or equal depth index of pair. So D. Right. So lowest index of C is 1 greater than or equal depth index of D, 2. So this is 
fall. So that means D is not an articulation point. Right? D is not an articulation point. So now let's see C. Okay? So now let's see C, whether C is an articulation point or not. So we get C and E. Because C is a parent, E is a child. C and E. Right? C to E. Right? So now, lowest numbers of E is the child. Greater than or equal, depth index of C. Right? So lowest numbers of E is 3. Greater than or equal, depth index of C, 3. So 3 equal to 3. So therefore, here, C is an articulation point. C is an articulation point. Right? And we can see that, right? C is an articulation point. Right? So how we figure out? Because it's, 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 true, uh, it's true with this condition, whether it's a greater than or equal. Okay. So now, um, let's try one more. Okay, let's try one more. So if you take, let's E and F, right? Whether to see the E is an articulation point or not. E and F, right? So E and F. So low, F is a child, right? E is a parent. Lower number of parent greater than or equal depth index of, um, sorry, uh, yeah, depth index of the parent, right? So if lower number is 3, greater than or equal, uh, depth index of um, E is 4. This is 4, so therefore E is not the articulation point. Right? E is not the articulation point. So let's take another real articulation point. Right? So this is clearly articulation point, but this is little bit doubt. Right? I mean, it's not doubt, but this little bit doubt because it's, it's not straight away you can figure it out, right? So, but G, you know, if G removes, of course this will break. But if E, F removes, what is going to happen, right? So to do that, we let's draw the uh, relationship between F and G, where F is a parent and G is a child, right? So again, we write down this, lower number of child, which is a G, greater than or equal depth index of a F, right? So you can see this, right? Yeah. So lower number of G is 6 greater than or equal F uh, D depth of F is 5. Of course, yes, 6 is greater than 5. So that means F is an articulation point. So that means this also an articulation point. This is also an articulation point. So this is how you can find it out, right? So now just a matter of you get 1 million uh, bridge or uh, switches or uh, ATMs put into a graph and then uh, get the spanning tree and get all parent-child nodes and then figure out what are the articulation points. But this condition is not true for the root node. The node you are starting, right? The node you are starting, this is not true. But there are, other than that, this formula does not fit for your yeah, root node because root node is exempted from uh, this formula. Right, so now, what is the importance of this, right? When you get a problem, first analyze the problem and see which, which data structure and which algorithm will fit to that. For example, when you give given, as we discussed, this is a recap, as we discussed, if you ask to find most critical switch, most critical ATM or most critical bridge, you figure out, okay, so these bridges are act as a graph, right? So now, uh, most critical mean when we remove that node, the graph is split to 2. That means articulation point of a graph. So just solve. Put it everything into the graph, do the DFA spanning tree, and then find the articulation point. Good thing. Next video, I'll try to show the solution for other problem. Think as a soft engineer. Till that, stay safe. Take care.